All right, Coach, maybe start off with your uh, first thoughts about the exhibition. All right, well, it's good to kick off the new year. And I uh, thought we had a good atmosphere uh, for our exhibition game. I thought our students turned out really well. I've been tweeting with them all day. So really appreciative of those guys coming out. And, you know, lower bowl was filled, so I thought that was good. Uh, positive thing, when I look at the stats, only five turnovers. So we didn't get sloppy. We weren't careless. Um, but, you know, our guys, to be honest, right now, we look a little banged up. We look a little beat up. We looked a little tired at times tonight. So um, over the next couple of days, we've got to get our legs back. We've got to get our spark back and, uh, and keep getting better. So uh, we've got a ways to go. We're not where we need to be. It's early. Uh, this reminds me of our team last year, this time, just early. You know, Farrell's, you know, going through some things. You know, Cam's been sick the last couple of days. Sap's been you know, messed his knee up the other day. So we got a couple of different things going on. So we really just need to get healthy. And, and our biggest focus right now, I think we'll be able to score, but we got to be good on the defensive end if, if we're going to take the next step. And that's our focus. And, uh, but it's good to get this behind us, and now it's, now it's on. So they all count, and we better be ready because it's, uh, it's coming quick, and we've got a good opponent, great opponent, and, and, uh, and a s tremendous coach coming in here next Friday. What do you think you need to do to get for them to get their legs back? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I guess just, you know, maybe we need to, you know, give them a little rest here and there. And, uh, you know, over the next couple of days, you know, we'll start prepping with Houston, you know, Monday or Tuesday. So, you know, we'll have a week of practice Monday through Thursday to play Friday. So, you know, this, this over these next three, four days, we'll have a chance to get some recovery, get some rest, get some treatment. And, and these guys will get, will get back. And so, we will be fine with that, but they just we, we just didn't have that spark, you know, that uh, that I thought we finished the season with last year. But it's a process, you know. It's day one, you know, of 31 games, so it's you know, so we still got a ways to go. We kind of equated it to it's just you had to figure out who they were, how good they were, and once you figured out they could play a little bit. Yeah, you know, he Jason's done a tremendous job down at Freed Hardman and you know, I think he was really dealt a tough hand. He lost a lot of kids right before the season started or in the summer and you know, he's kind of put this group together and they're learning as well, but those kids can all shoot. So you got to really be attention to detail, attentive to detail, uh get out to shooters. Uh I thought we got beat to some loose balls. You know, 18 offensive rebounds, too many, and then we only turned them over 11 times. Uh those are some stats defensively. That I, that I look at that we've got to get better. Now, we did hold them to 24% shooting. That's terrific. If you could do that every night, obviously, you'll win a lot of games. But uh, the caliber of opponent, no disrespect to Freed Hartman, obviously raises uh, at a high, you know, to another level uh, over the next two weeks. Uh, 19 to 11, they had the lead, call a timeout. What kind of changes at that point to rip off that 23 to 2 run? Yeah, I don't even know if we called timeout. Did we call timeout? I thought you, guys you know, uh, I don't know. So it may have been a media. Um, you know, it, sometimes you get so the game is 40 minutes, and as I've become a head coach, you learn that, you know, that obviously you can't let it get too out of hand, but you got to let your guys get in the flow of the game, learn. And then obviously tonight, you know, nobody in the exhibition games that are going to be changing a ton of defenses and uh, running a bunch of different sets. So you're going to be vanilla, and you just want to get – the things you've been focusing on, the core of your defense in place, and taking care of the ball, sharing the ball. But, you know, we shot a ton of threes. Some were open, some were quick, forced bad threes. But they were playing us basically to, 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 to take the shot at times, you know, where they were really sagging in on the post. But um, so I, I want our guys to shoot with great confidence. That's, that's been a strength of ours. But we can't just live and die by that three-point line. Uh, academic uh, issue that was uh, brought to my attention um, about 5 o'clock tonight. Um, I won't really comment any more than saying Tyler Rambo is a tremendous kid, tremendous character kid. It has nothing to do with anything that he did, ill-advised, nothing at all. It's, a, it's an administration issue uh, with Tyler. And uh, I was found out about it uh, about an hour and a half before tip-off. And just from a precautionary standpoint, we sat him out tonight. So, but Tyler's, um, it's an academic uh, administration issue that we'll deal with tomorrow, Monday, and hopefully have resolved by Tuesday. Jonathan, does it look like he's not jumping? Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, he reminds me, if you watched us play last year, he reminds me of Jonathan Farrell last year right now. And that's nothing, 
against him. He's a tremendous player. I thought he finished the season so well for us last year. And that's why I think everybody's frustrated because when he came back, he had a great summer and, and they're, they're playing. You know, everybody's saying he's dominating playing and then he gets hurt the second day. And I don't know. He's a senior and he's a tough kid. I don't know. I think it's a lot of conditioning. I don't know if it's 70-30 conditioning injury. I don't know if it's 30-70. Um, you know, we talk about it basically every day. But the problem is if you just say, hey, I'm going to rest him for November and December and you bring him back January, I don't know when he's going to be getting, getting in shape because you can't f condition yourself while you're out with this injury, you know, if it's bothering you. So he's not where he needs to be. Uh, so we just got to continue to stay the course and, and stay faithful, and, and, and good things will happen because he, he's about the right thing. So something good will happen for him. Still, though, I mean, 21 minutes, 6 points, 12 rebounds. Obviously, you want a little bit more you know, out of him, but I mean, is that possible? Yeah, if he got 12 rebounds tonight, that's terrific, um, 6 points. But, you know, obviously the caliber opponent, the size, the strength, the speed is going gonna, is gonna to ramp up. But he's been our best post defender last year. Um, he's our best offensive. He's our best screener. He does so many things for us. He can, you know, he can drive the ball. He's unselfish. So he's just he's just not right where he needs to be right now. But I didn't expect him to be, and we just got to keep getting him. You know, he's one of those guys. We just got to get him some rest, get him some treatment, and get him better. But there's no, you know, if you sit him, then he's not doing anything. So it's it's really a tough 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 situation. So. Um, you got to do what's right by the kid, uh, and then, but also balance what's best for the basketball team. What did you think of the way the new guys, uh, Cuomo and Seymour and uh, Langston, played? Well, I think, you know, Seymour, I know what Seymour is. Seymour can score. I mean, that's his mindset. He's thinking, I'm, he's thinking shoot first, shoot second, shoot third. Uh, that's, his, that's, his, that's his DNA. Uh, but he's but he, but that's a good thing because he can make tough shots. He's a guy that can make baskets. Four for eleven. You know, you hopefully there's probably one or two shots he could probably take out of there to where maybe he's four for nine or five for nine. That's a great night then. Uh, you know, he's got to make his free throw. But I thought Seymour. You know, he's got to grow on the defensive end. But he's I'm excited about Justin's career here. You know, just being a sophomore. Thought Wayne did some good things. He's still growing into his role. And then Flomo. Uh, I thought his shot selection was. Was a little shaky, uh, but I'm, I, at least he's at least he's trying to you know make plays. You know he's just got to learn to trust the offense and, and 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 play you know play through that. So I thought they all did a good job. I thought to be honest, I thought when we subbed early, I thought our bench gave us some good energy early. And I think that the bottom line on our team, I think at the end of the day, when you evaluate wins, losses, and how good we do. I think one through five, one through six, when they get in shape and they start meshing, I know what we're going to get from them, or we know what we're going to get from them. But it's about Tyler Rambo, Wayne, Kedrick, uh, Teron, seeing how those guys can help. Because our dominant teams, I think we've been able to go eight, nine, even 10 deep one year um, to where we can physically dominate teams. Can you uh, say a little bit about getting a team a high major, which is what they really are, like Houston coming in here, uh, and, and how big that is. Well, it's great. You know, it's great. Uh, I was talking to Kenny Roth out there about it. Uh, it's great. I'm excited to get them here. Hopefully, our fans are. Hopefully, we've got a great turnout. You know, for that doubleheader, women's men doubleheader. The women's got a great opponent in Ohio. But then I hope you know, seven o'clock Friday night. This place is, you know loud and wild and just like it was at the end of the year last year because it's a terrific program and you're talking about one of the elite coaches in college basketball final four coach you know when he took Oklahoma to the final four uh, assistant coach with the Houston Rockets so um, you know I'm, I'm excited to get them here uh, but I'm excited about taking that opportunity uh, to showcase our program but for our team to get better and that's what that game's there for. That's what next week of practice is for. But, you know, they play come from a great league, Cincinnati, Memphis, Connecticut, national champion. So um, it's a great home game. Uh, so I hope we win because we got to go back there next year. <laughs> so right now the only positive of that is maybe the Rockets will be at home. We can watch Isaiah play.
You mentioned uh, uh, Samson. We asked Jarvis about a uh, big coach that came coming in earlier. You never even heard of him before. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, I went <laughs> I went to school with Antonio McDice at Alabama, and he didn't. He, I mean. You know, some of the best players you've ever been around, they're not, you know, they're not students of the game. And plus, when Jarvis was coming out, Coach Sampson hasn't, you know, he hasn't been. He's been in the NBA, I don't know the years, but I think he's been in the NBA two, three, you know, out of the last three years. So, you know, with Jarvis in high school, he's not following Indiana basketball in South Georgia. So uh, that doesn't surprise me. So that's, uh, you know, obviously everybody that follows basketball knows how how great of a coach he is. And, you know, we're excited for the opportunity to compete against them. It just seems like with these guys, they're going to have to remember to play defense. It just seems like they're going to have to. That's the biggest thing, you know, is can we impose our will defensively on teams night in, night out for 40 minutes? Uh, because if we can do that, I think we have, all, we have, you can see, we hit one spurt tonight where we can really put offensive spurts together. Uh, because Cam can push the basketball. We've got three three guys, four guys around him that can shoot. And we got one or two post guys that we excuse me, got two post guys that can finish around the basket. So uh, it's about selling out on the defensive end. Cam takes the most shots tonight, also has ten assists. We feel like that's gonna be a common trend as we move along. Uh, no, I just think it's just, you know, how the game presents itself. I mean ten assists, one turnover, he'll probably always lead us in assists just because you know, but I think there'll be games where he may take 10 shots. There may be games where he may need to take 18. You know, I think it'll fluctuate. But, um, you know, he needs to be. Those guys, our main guys, Jarvis and Cam, you know, they need to be in that 10 to 12 range. And then based on how the game is, you know, they may get a couple more here and there. So, but I thought the shots were pretty dispersed pretty evenly. You know, Jeff Moss probably could have gotten a couple more. Uh, and then Jonathan Farrell maybe a couple more. But outside of that, I thought they were, you know, dispersed pretty good. 13, 12, 11, you know, those are really, and then seven, those are our main scores. 